heard someone speak and felt mesmerized by the words they were speaking, like it wasn't even the words they were using, it was the energy of the words or the way they were delivering the words that had so much impact on you and you're like, whoa. Or maybe it happened to you that you out of nowhere thought of a thought or an idea and you were like, where did that come from? Like, I can't believe I thought of that as though the thought, the idea was coming from out there, right? From a different dimension, from an outside force. This is what is commonly referred to as channeling. And there are lots of myths around channeling. And in this video, I want to explain to you why and how this happens. And I want to share with you the three conditions you need to create if you want to tap into this. And if you master this, you can tap into the state on demand if you wanted to. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing at different points a couple of resources that you can use uh, to support the three conditions that I talked about. So by the end of this video, you'll understand how to create the state for yourself. All right, so let's get right into it. So first thing I want to talk about real quick is some of the BS, honestly, and the myths that are surrounding channeling. And when I say BS and myths, I don't necessarily mean that the people who claim to channel are lying when they say that they're talking to galactic entities and angels and things like that. I can't confirm or deny that. So I've had my own experiences, but those were my experiences. I don't expect anyone else to believe them. And in the same way, I hope they don't expect me or anybody else to take what they say for granted. It's okay if we have our own separate truths. And if you know anything about what I talk about, you know that I don't believe, I don't believe in such a thing as absolute truth. I believe and know that truth is always paradoxical. It's two sides of the coin, both at the same time and neither. It's, it's just the way it works. So it's okay that we disagree about this particular thing, or whether somebody thinks they're channeling an, a guide, an angel, something, or a, their own higher states of consciousness, uh, the collective consciousness that we all share. Um, it doesn't matter what, which side you're on. But I think that the issue with believing in this connection to angels or, or connection to guides or overemphasizing it at least is that we are outsourcing our power okay i believe that it's our consciousness i believe it's our consciousness and our collective consciousness that gives us this ability to speak with this much wisdom and power and we all have access to it at any time when we talk about it as if it's something that only elites, only a few people who are so spiritually evolved and so whatever it is, have access to, we are creating this separation, this divide. It's like we're saying that that person can channel and I can't do that or I, I, I don't have access to that until the guides choose me or choose to talk to me because I have some sort of amazing quality about me. I don't know, it creates a lot of mental crap in my opinion i think if you're not careful again this is not to take a jab at people who believe in these things okay um but it is important that when we that when we speak about these things that if that's the belief that we don't overemphasize where it's coming from that is personal okay the other thing the other thing that is really really important is that we have to be honest about what it takes to get to that state because a lot of people who claim to channel, in my opinion, aren't open enough about all the other factors that get them there, all the habits that enable them to be that creative, all the, the daily practice that enable them to speak like that. And I don't know if they do that because they don't understand the value of those things. I doubt it, honestly. Or maybe because there is a certain enigma and a magnetism and aura of whatever, if it seems as though it's effortless and it's, I'm just born that way. Um, I speak like that. I definitely didn't work hard to get here. Right? I wasn't trying. It's just the way I am, you know. I don't know which whichever is. I can't speak of other people's intentions. So it could very well be that it's just me projecting on other people. Maybe maybe they really just connect, woke up one day and they, they speak to some angel or some guide and they don't do anything else other than just be their amazing selves. Um, but I, I am, my belief and what I see, despite the experiences that I've had, like I said, I've had experiences where 
um, I've, I've connected to things or felt that I've connected to outside things. But despite that, I still believe that it, the magic is in our consciousness. The power is within, it's internal. There is no out there to go to, it's always within. And so is our consciousness. And I believe we all have access to it and we all have access to it immediately at this time. It's not like some people, you know, have worked enough to get to a certain level. No, we are always connected, all of us. But it is true that different people connect at different le levels based on their uh, current state of awareness or consciousness. So the more you can expand your consciousness, the, the wider the altered states that you can access, of course, um, the deeper your connection. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about the three keys that are necessary or the three areas that you need to create in order for you to connect. All right, the first thing that you want to work through is your spiritual slash emotional growth. Where this is another way of saying energy, but less fancy and less complicated. Spiritual and emotional growth is exactly what I just mentioned earlier, that yes, everyone is connected at all times, but it depends on how uh, expanded your consciousness is and how much you work on yourself. That's the depth of connection, if you will, that you will have and the depth of wisdom that you can access. And it makes sense, right? So the clearer you are, meaning the more you work through your own um, judgments, your own thoughts, your own ideas, your the, the more you can work through these things, the clearer you can become to see things as they really are. So if you come with lots of judgments, you're not going to be a very clear channel for, for receiving. You're not going to see things as they really are because you're too busy, you know, being in your own mind thinking that this is this, this, this plant is a plant. I see it as a plant. It gets a little far. This is a plant. Okay. If I can't see this as anything other than a plant and I can't see its purpose as anything other than, well, it's supposed to decorate my house and, uh, it exists for my benefit and I'm using it right for whatever. I can't see it as an entity on its own. And I think there is some sort of a hierarchy, right? And if I don't remove the judgments that I have about it, the ideas that I have about it, I can't, there, there's a lot I can't see because I'm too busy being in my own mind and my own ego, seeing it the way I've been programmed to see it. So that's what it means to be clear. And also the other thing is, this is the reason why sometimes when somebody speaks, they have a lot more impact than someone else, even though they're saying the same words. And that's because that person who is clear is not speaking to impress you. They're actually speaking the truth. They're sharing something that they are practicing in real life. And this cannot be faked. This truly cannot be faked. When you listen to someone, I don't care if you think you have zero intuitive power. I don't care if you think you can't, you know, you would never be able to guess. You will sense if somebody is talking about something that they actually apply in their in their own life or they have gone through versus somebody who just read it somewhere and thought it was a really cool, you know, thing to say and then they they regurgitated it because, you know, the saying goes that you can copy the, the words or the content, but you can't copy the person's journey. All right. The second condition I want to talk about is skills. And this one is so underestimated and very, very few people like to talk about it. Um, I'm going to be completely candid. This is especially true. And it seems to me that it's especially true when dealing with uh, female entrepreneurs in spiritual businesses. There is this whole idea that for some reason it is perceived as though it is of higher value. If you are good at what you do, just because like you didn't earn it through work, you were just you're just magic like that, right? And there is a lot of denying of or hiding of what to me seems like a lot of work. So for example, I can think of somebody who is really, really an amazing speaker. And I think there is a lot about this person that is very impressive and very, um, I respect her a lot and I really like her a lot. So please understand this isn't like, um, it's not criticism towards her. I'm just legitimately confused as to why she never talks about the training she had and the work she had in order to get to where she is because she's such a good speaker. She's so good at, at, at influencing people. She speaks in metaphors a lot. She speaks in figures of speech. Um, and she always says, you know, it's my past, my experience, she had experience as a salesperson before she became an entrepreneur. I am not buying it. <laughs> 
honestly, I'm just not buying it. Like, I, I don't buy that, okay? There is, there is definitely, there's got to be a lot of practice there. And not just skill set, not just skill set, but daily routines and habits. Because you don't get to a point where you have the kind of like three to five day master classes with like one, two, three hours back to back speaking with that kind of amazing, beautiful energy. And, uh, you know, and you keep going on and on without having to had like some sort of daily practice or some structure around your creativity, some structure around maybe like writing a lot and journaling and synthesizing that information. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that people who are able to connect to a live video and speak for three hours about a topic and they're so good and they hold your attention and they speak fluidly and they use amazing, you know, uh, metaphors and they're great storytellers and whatnot. Yes, they have talent. Yes, they're born with some of, with talent. They're born with it, but it cannot, it cannot be at that level with that consistency without some serious work. And I think it's actually something to be proud of. I don't understand why it's not being shared. I think it's actually a good thing. So again, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there. That's one of many, 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 many examples I can think of. And I've seen this over and over and over and over and over and over again, where people just talk too much. Women or those who are driven with the feminine in business talk too much about spirituality and energy and all of that. If you know me, you know I believe in those things 100%, okay? I'm not about hustle. I love to do work with fun, with playfulness, I agree. But then it's like taking things to one extreme, whereas those who are driven by the masculine keep talking about the hustle and get into people's DMs and sending private messages. No time for, for, for fun, no time for creativity, no time for energy work, no time, it doesn't matter how I feel, just push, push, push. It's like, why do you have to be one or the other? Why can't we create some balance between these two? Because it's not about being completely on the feminine side or completely on the masculine side, it's about balancing these two energies and knowing when to use which one, right? Knowing when to use the feminine versus the masculine. And there is place and space for both. Anyway, I went off the tangent there, but the idea is uh, people who talk a lot about channeling, maybe they take it for granted, okay? I try to always think of, like I said, I don't know people's intentions, so I'm not saying that they're lying. It's just, it boggles my mind that they don't talk about it. But maybe, maybe because it's been so long, like if you're a complete expert at this and you're so good at it, you forgot what got you there in the first place. So maybe they forgot that maybe earlier on in their journey, they read lots of books, they went through lots of courses, they did a lot of studying, they did a lot of training, they did a lot of that stuff. And now they take it for granted and they don't talk about it anymore because they're in a different space. That's an explanation and you know, People, most of the time people have good intentions. So we'll just assume that that's the case. But you, the listener, need to be aware that you can't get to that level just because you woke up one day and you became like that. You have to understand when you see somebody who's speaking with so much power, with so much fluidity, yes, they have the talent, but they did a lot of work, a lot of work. And that's good news because it means that you can work on yourself and develop that too. That's the key message here. Three, and this is, I, I mean, I touched on it a minute ago, which is creating the right circumstances, right? So it's not enough to just have the skills, but you have to create the circumstances that will enable you to channel, to be able to speak like that. Another word for channeling, by the way, is just being in flow getting out of your head. You see, like, it's nice to use less glamorous words that we can all agree on. Just getting in the flow, getting out of your head, allowing, if you believe in any sort of um, power in the universe or a greater spirit to the universe, allowing it to speak through you. So instead of being the speaker, you are the vessel. You're just uh, enabling it to express itself on you, and I mean, through you. I used to say, uh, a lot of times that, you know, we are actors and the world is a stage. And the more I practice this, the more I'm realizing actually we are the stage for this thing to express itself through us. So you be the vessel, you be the tool, you be the, the stage for it to speak through you. And you do that by getting out of your mind. And to get out of your mind, it doesn't necessarily require that you use substances like sacred plant medicines, which I am a huge fan of. If, yeah, I mean, I am such a fan that I actually use it in our, our practice. Um, have had dozens, of ex dozens and dozens of personal ceremonies and then many more ceremonies throughout the years of different types of sacred plant medicines that have really helped me connect 
to this higher consciousness and I am a huge supporter of them and that's why I use them in our practice and I recommend them all the time, of course, within legal responsible settings. However, you don't even have to go that far and you definitely don't wanna use them as a crutch. You wanna be able to create the conditions in your daily life and the conditions in your daily life, there's too many of them. So for the sake of the time of this video, I'm gonna share a link to the what I call the prescription document, uh, which is something I created a while back that basically shows you how you can get out of your mind because you can't solve the problems that you might have today from the same state of consciousness as you probably already know this you have to get out of your mind so so you can see what's actually going on like you, you have to bypass your own thinking mind and that requires getting into your body getting into your emotions that requires eating certain types of foods cutting out foods that uh, create maybe uh, space or bacteria that is not very supportive to the right kind of thoughts, taking care of your sleep, movement, these kind of things that you do day to day, your environment, cutting out things that drain your energy, people and things and activities that drain your energy, you wouldn't believe how much of your creativity and your flow is being blocked by all the bullshit that's going on in your life and when you cut it off, your life will get so much better, you will feel a lot better, you'll perform a lot better, and you'll be surprised how much wisdom and power and knowledge you already have and how much clarity you have and how powerful your consciousness and your mind already is. So be sure to check the link in the description. It's called The Prescription. And um, yeah, check it out, read it. And if you like it, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter. Um, I call it the Saturday Mojo and I have really big plans for the people who have subscribed or who are subscribing there there are some beautiful things coming up for those who subscribe to the saturday mojo okay to wrap things up i want to leave you with a, a couple of notes to remember that are super important one is that if anything that you quote unquote channel while you're in this state if any thought or idea is not rooted in love or joy it's not yours if it's something that's judgmental towards someone else or yourself, if, like I said, anything that's not loving, that's not coming from a place of love, that's not coming from a place of joy, it is not yours. It is not yours and you need to revisit it. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it that, okay, I've channeled this. I've channeled that this person is a piece of shit. That's not channeling, okay? I channeled that this person shouldn't exist. That's not channeling no matter who it is that we're speaking about. I don't care if it's Hitler. I mean this literally. I don't care if you're talking about someone like that, okay? If even when when speaking of things that have happened that are of that scale, if you're truly channeling higher consciousness, it will be purely love and joy and acceptance towards that person and understanding and wisdom and love towards them. Not necessarily liking what had happened and what they had done, but there wouldn't be any um, anything other than love and joy. That's the first thing I want you to remember. Then the second thing I wanna leave you with, which will really help you, speaking of really knowing what's yours and what's not, like how do you know if the things that you're channeling are really supposed to be yours, um, other than the obvious, is it coming from love and joy? I will put another link in the description, which is called uh, Shut Up The Noise, I think. Uh, it's, it's a tool or some steps that help you tune out from the outer world, block everybody else's voice and tune into your own inner voice. This is very, very important because a lot of what you think is yours is actually not coming from you. So one of the most important steps to channeling your own voice and what's supposed to come through you, the message that's supposed to come through you, one of the most important things actually is to be able to disconnect from other people's voices every once in a while and allow yourself the space to uh, to allow all of the things that you have consumed, that your mind has consumed, to synthesize, to, to, to settle, and for you to have that clarity. So make sure to use that document as well in the description. And that's it for today. Again, if you enjoyed this video, if you haven't already liked it, please make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And um, check out the links in the description. And if you like them, make sure to subscribe to the Saturday Mojo, which is our newsletters at Brands Are Alive. This was Aliana with Brands Are Alive, founder, and um, I really don't like labels, so I'm gonna drop labels. I used to call myself Transformation Guide and Brand Slash Marketing Strategist, but I'm Aliana. I think that's all you need to know um, for now. And I founded Brands Are Alive with the purpose of helping 
people like you really connect to who they really are and bring their full self-expression to everything they create. There's very few things in life that bring me more joy than seeing people say yes to their hearts and know that there is a way to live their passion, purpose, and profit. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.